I was just listening to a song I made with my friends in 24 hours. What I really wanted to talk about was side chaining. If you have seen my feedback live streams, it is something I complain about in project files. So there's a really popular way. What they will do is like right click the mixer, create a automation clip. Now you see that just made a huge clip. If you wanted to make a one that was a, like a lot shorter, you could just select that and then make another automation clip. Hey, and look now it's only in this area, which is good. And they'll place it onto under every kick. And there is a couple things that are really bad about this method, in my opinion. I'm not gonna say that you can't do it to make good music, but there are things that are just inconvenient for the workflow of making music. That means anytime you wanna change the kick, you gotta change the automation thing as well, which is not the end of the world. And if you have them right next to each other, then at least you could like select them at the same time and move them that way. But not everybody does. Like a plenty of projects I've, I've opened are like, you know, the side chaining is all the way at the top and your kicks are down here. And it's like, oh, it's, it's that's annoying. But that's not the worst part. The real thing that gets me is every time your cursor, your playhead is at the beginning of like a bar, which is usually where a kick will also be. If you like look at the mixer, this is already down. It's gone to the bottom of the, the side chain automation point. So that means if I want to like click in here and just listen to the, the 808 on its own, I can't anymore. I'm playing it, but because that automation curve starts at the bottom, got to like put it back up. That That's really annoying. Have to do that every time. Once you automate this, you can't use it for anything else. It's you're, you're stuck using it as an automation point which is kind of defeats the purpose of having all these faders. That's the beauty of them is that they're all easily at your disposal. If you have everything like linked, then you can't do that anymore. So the only way to change the volume anymore is to like go to the synth and play it and change it there. But you might not want to do that because let's say you have distortion plugins and that's going to change how loud it goes into the distortion, therefore changing the, the timbre of the distortion that you're getting. The other option would be to open a plugin. That would be good, but that just means that every time you want to change the volume, you can't just change the fader. You got to click on the track, open up the plugin, then change the volume from there. You know, it may seem like nothing, but it does add up. If you are going to automate using automation, at least, at the very least, use balance to automate it. You can still do like the exact same way, but instead of automate using this to go down to sidechain, you're using this knob to go down. That way you still have the ability to, to change the fader, which is, that's a nice, easy thing to do. You know, if it doesn't bother you, then then keep on doing what you're doing. If you want to he hear, like, in my opinion, some better ways, then I will explain them because there are better ways of doing this. Then there's the other issue, and I've never tested it myself, but there's the issue of smoothing, where you may think your automation is going straight down and then going up, but internally in the program, it actually might look, resemble more like this, where it doesn't go straight down, it like it gradually goes down. We don't know, I'm gonna test that out. So the regular way, the, the, the typical way of side chaining would be to have your kick go into its own track. Whatever sound you wanna get side chaining, here we'll want to click at the bottom. Anytime you click this little arrow thing, you're routing the audio to another place. By default, it will just go to the master. It's going to the master. If I turn it down, oh, it gets quieter. And you can still see that the audio is playing inside the track, but it's not going to the master channel. That's quiet because none of that audio ever leaves. It's never going to the master channel. So you have to turn it up. And then if you route it to another one, it will not only go to the master channel, it will go to this other channel, which also goes to a master channel. So now you're gonna get double the signal. So it becomes louder when you do that. You want to send the kick to where you want to sidechain your sound, but you will want to turn it down just so you don't duplicate the signal and it gets twice as loud. What you want to do on this channel is open up Fruity Limiter. You go to the compressor tab and here's the little magic thing. You use the sidechain, you right click and you can see the sample. This is the name of the track. So whatever name this was, let's call it kick then that's going to be the name that shows up. Hey, kick, nice. And then you want to turn the threshold down 
and the ratio down. Knee is not as important, so I wouldn't worry about that for now. It does have an impact, it's just for simplicity's sake. Threshold and ratio are usually the first things you'll want to change. And you can see the blue line is the input and the white line is it going down in volume. So that's your side chaining happening. However, you can see it's quite raggedy. It's definitely not as smooth as a curve. I, I don't know if, if it's going to be a bad side chain. It could still work. If you want a super short side chain, if we make this really, really short, the release time. Oh, oh, that's really ugly. Look at that. Oh, so a lot of people use a separate side chain input. They call that a, a ghost kick or a ghost snare if you're side chaining with a snare. The goal is, is then to look for a sample that is super, super short. Like you can even, it doesn't matter what you use. You can use a hi-hat for all that matters or white noise. I've actually done that where using that incredibly small peak. And this is because it's a ghost kick. You don't want to hear this. So not only do you want to like link it to the channel that you want to side chain, but you also don't want it to go to the master. So either turn it down in volume or just unlink it and it won't go anyways. So now you don't hear it, which is good. You just want it to be used as a sidechain input. And yeah, that's right. Click noise, sidechain. Yeah, this will sidechain. Let me, yeah, I need to mute that. Let's go back to free limiter. The sidechain input, if that is still lower than the threshold, no sidechaining will happen. So as long as this is like up here, it will never sidechain. So you got to make sure that either one, the threshold is low enough so that it actually triggers or that the input of the, the side chain, whatever is being used to side chains is louder. So now, oh, see now it is side chaining. And now we have a very, very short side chain curve. You know, compare that to what it was before with this kick. As you can see, it's a big kick. So when you're side chaining, you're never really gonna make it shorter than that shape. Whereas if you wanted to, well, now you can. And of course you can still make it as long as you want as it was before. You just have a lot more flexibility. You still now have the problem of the kick and the side chain being on a separate channel. Like, oh, that's really annoying because if I change the kick, well now I gotta change the side chain. The best way to avoid that is just have the kick and side chain be in the same MIDI clip. The kick sample play in MIDI and also the side chain play in MIDI. So now we got a kick. Very good. Here's just some extra notes if you are side chaining. The limiter is still active and there's no way to turn it off. So my advice is just to put the ceiling up all the way and put the attack down. This attack adds latency. You don't really need that latency, so just turn it down. But doing this way can sometimes be a little bit like, oh, you got to set up a lot of stuff. It's just so much easier to just to make a clip like that. But what if I told you you could play automation clips l with MIDI. Yeah, that, what, what do I mean by that? Let me show you, let me show you. Let's say I click on this clip. You'll notice that once I start playing this on the keyboard, whoa, what just happened there? It just played the automation clip. So the automation clip, if you look at this, it goes down and then up. Every time you play that note, hey, look at that. So you can use this as side chaining. So now if I just mute this and let's call it MIDI side chain. So I'm gonna put a kick down and I'll put a MIDI clip here just as if it was a kick or a side chain input. All right, make sure that's not affecting anything. Cool, cool, cool. Let's try it. Now it should side chain as well. There we go. The nice thing about this method is that if I move this around, you'll see this doesn't ever change. So you'll never have that problem where you're moving this about and then you go to play like the bass pattern on its own and you can't hear it because that thing's all the way down. That will never happen. That's the awesome thing about this. You still have the problem of, of this fader going down, which means you can't really use it as a normal fader. So my solution would be then not to side chain it with the fader, but instead, like I mentioned earlier, use 3D balance instead, just so you still have the ability to do that. It's, now this method isn't perfect either, because if you stop in the middle of side chaining, you can get it stuck so that, oh, I, I press start and stop really quickly. It stopped before it finished. Every time this plays, essentially it's just mimicking this automation curve. So if you play it 
but stop here, for instance, then you can see it's still only halfway. It won't have come back. That does happen, that it will get stuck. The easy way to fix it is just press play again, just let it run out. But yeah, that can still be an annoyance. If you're gonna be using this method for side chaining, you don't need any of these automation clips, but I would still keep one just because it's a good visualization of what's happening in terms of side chaining. It's muted, so it will never affect the mixer. But if I move this about, this will change the type of side chaining that it does do. If I make this really long, then you'll definitely see that. Oh, yeah, we go. So if I made this really short, so short, in fact, that now we're getting into the topic of smoothing. See, I don't know if it's moving, but just not showing it. So let's open up Edison. This was the smoothing that I was talking about in the beginning of the video that I wanted to check out. As long as it sounds like the side chaining is working, then it's good. It doesn't need to be a sample accurate thing that happens. It just needs to work. But I am curious. All right, I'm going to record just the, the synth. So we'll see if it side chains or not. It should completely cut down and then come back now. Okay, we've made like a big square chunk. But if I look at this, it doesn't look like it completely just drops out to silence. It looks like it gets gradually quieter and then gradually goes up as if it wasn't this shape, but a faded in shape just like that instead, which implies that there is smoothing going on. Let's, let's try with Fruity Balance. Does Fruity Balance also have side chaining? So if I unlink this to nothing, so now the fader won't get side chaining, but Fruity Balance will. There we go. I've, I've turned all the display things to like not be smooth at all, but even so it goes so quick that it's not visible each time anyways, but it is side chaining. We do know that even if it doesn't look like it, let's keep that version. This is fader. Now let's open up a new one and this will be just for balance. Let's give it a spin. Ooh, this is an interesting result. All right, let's take a look. If you look at the, um, damn. So this definitely looks like it just, out of all of them, this one looks a lot more like it just cut the audio. And then look at this one in comparison. This was the fader. You can see that this peak is smaller than that peak. Whereas the, these peaks don't get smaller, they just cut off. And these ones, oh look, that one's smaller, that one's smaller. There's definitely a case of fading here. Also, let's check out the durations because I didn't change anything about the duration. This is the exact same automation curve. Here we have, let's see, selection, 29 milliseconds. So if I was to make this like 29 milliseconds. Also 29 milliseconds now. So it looks like the, the fading not only happens within inside the automation, but also outside of it. Bear that in mind. So if you are really precise and want your exact, what's exactly happening in the automation clip to be exactly what's happening in audio, then I would not be using a fader. I'd be using Fruity Balance. That definitely looks out of, out of these comparisons, like a much, look at that, look, completely deadline this, it just kind of morphs. It's like it's attempting to side chain. I mean, maybe this is something I'm doing wrong. Maybe there is like a, an option to turn off smoothing. Not that I know of. I would feel really dumb if there was. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect doing this, but that's a clear, obvious answer that there is smoothing on these mixers, whereas Fruity Balance does not have that. Does it really matter if it has it or not? If you have audio that just cuts down instantly like this, it can really easily create a click like this. If it was a sidechain right in the middle of a wave, that's where clicks come from. I'm often adding my own smoothing just to avoid clicks. Like in LFO tool, there's that smoothing option. It's not that smoothing is necessarily bad. In fact, sometimes it's necessary to get a better, nicer sound, but it's definitely good to know. Yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. Those are some like much better ways of sidechaining in FL Studio now. Anyways, last week I made a track in 24 hours with my friends. There were tons of really talented producers and we all made a track. So if in case you're, you're interested in checking the track that we made, then you, there's a link in the description and 
you can check out everybody else's track because there's some really good music there. All the tracks are featured on this compilation and all the proceeds of that compilation go to charity, to a, a nature preserving charity. So it was a really fun experience and uh, uh, had a blast. Stick around for more tutorials and, and groundbreaking research just like this. I do lessons as well. Hope to see you again soon. Put your